folks, today I'd like to take a casual peek into the Pirates Constructible Strategy game, also later known as the Pirates of the Cursed Seas Pocket Model game. Now the Pirates Constructible Strategy game, or Pirates CSG for short, was first released in 2005 and saw 13 uh, releases or sets or waves or whatever you want to call it. Pirates CSG was classified and sold along with other card games such as Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Magic the Gathering, Belisera, World of Warcraft, uh, a whole host of other card games. While the Pirates CSG shared similarities with other card games in that uh, the cards were a major component of the game, or that they were sold in blind booster packs, the Pirates CSG was very much different. For example, the cards themselves, uh, while other card games were made out of cardboard, uh, the Pirate CSG cards were made of polystyrene, uh, very much similar to credit cards and debit cards. Another difference uh, between uh, Pirates and other card games was the, uh, the very name of Pirate's Constructible Strategy game itself, in that the cards were constructible. You could actually construct various different objects in the game. The Pirate CSG is essentially a game, but this video is not going to focus on the gameplay aspects. There are other videos on YouTube that are dedicated to the gameplay portion of Pirates and I'll post the link to an example uh, down below in the description. Instead, this video is going to focus on my fascination with the Pirate CSG and the collectability aspect of the game. I'm a big fan of the Age of Sail and this game is set in a fantasized version of the Age of Sail. So when I saw this game at a local gaming shop back in 2005, uh, with the very first set, the Pirates of the Spanish Main, I was instantly hooked uh, before even opening the very first pack. And as soon as I opened the pack, uh, the addiction has uh, gone on ever since. Now what we have here are some of the items that are a part of the Pirates CSG. We have the booster packs, the box sets that they were sold in, uh, the cards themselves, rules, and uh, the punched out cards to make various sailing ships of different types, sea monsters, islands and treasure, and a whole bunch more. First, let's take a look at a booster pack. And what we have here is a Pirates of the Spanish Main booster pack, which was the uh, set that was first released in 2005 and started off the whole Pirate CSG. And you can see here it was reduced down to a dollar. Uh, this was uh, purchased toward the end of the pirates uh, lifetime and uh, these packs were sold on average at three dollars uh, per pack at retail and uh, what's really cool about these packs is that you could actually play a game just with one pack alone uh, each pack contained six styrene cards uh, where you could actually build two ships uh, one for each player an island uh, with some treasure on it and uh, a checklist and some rules so you could actually play a game right away now of course you would want to buy more packs you want to build a bigger fleet <laughs> and have a, a wide variety of ships and later on sea monsters and uh, you can see on this pack uh, two ships battling it out uh, which is what really caught my eye when I saw this game at the gaming store and uh, like I said, I bought a pack uh, right away uh, without even uh, having to look up uh, the rules online to see how this game was. <laughs> I'm just, like I said, a big fan of Age of Sail and the, the artwork really got me. <laughs> and uh, the artwork in each pack has uh, been pretty cool. You can see here uh, Pirates of the Crimson Coast, uh, the second set. And you got a couple more ships battling out. And uh, we also have here uh, Pirates of the Davy Jones Curse, uh, which was the first set to get into the more fantasized elements of the game. Uh, the first three or four sets were almost historically accurate, uh, a lot closer to historical accuracy than the later sets, such as this one here, where uh, you could see a focus on sea monsters and the fantastical elements of uh, the pirate's age or uh, the age of sail. 
And uh, they also had a set uh, later on focusing on the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. I think this was the 8th or ninth set. And uh, you could actually build and construct ships uh, such as the Black Pearl, the Dauntless, uh, a whole bunch of other ships uh, that were focused on the game. And you can actually have crew members that were uh, you know, from the movies uh, such as Jack uh, Sparrow or Elizabeth Swan here or even Davy Jones, a whole bunch of uh, cast from the movie you can have as crew on your ships, which was uh, pretty cool. And uh, we have here uh, Pirates of the Cursed Seas. As soon as uh, this set was over and the, this set came along, uh, they changed the name uh, to Pirates of the Cursed Seas and they changed it to, instead of Constructible Strategy Game, to Pocket Model Game. And uh, I'm not sure why they did that. Uh, I thought it was perfectly fine with a Constructible Strategy Game or CSG, but uh, they went ahead and did that. Uh, but the line soon ended uh, with this Savage Shores set, which was the 13th uh, set uh, in the game. Unfortunately, it ended, uh, and I wish it didn't, uh, but uh, all things come to an end, I guess. But uh, taking a look at more of the items we have here, we have the cards themselves, uh, which are made of polystyrene, a very thick uh, plastic card that were pre-punched. Uh, they were pre-punched with either a ship here, uh, or at least uh, portions of a ship, uh, or sea monsters, or crew and coin, uh, just a whole bunch of different things. And uh, taking a look at this particular one, we have one of a ship uh, that was part of three cards. And ships were either uh, pre-punched with either one, two, or three cards, depending on the size of the ship. And uh, for three cards, of course, would be the bigger ships. And this one here, the La Resolucion. And this is a Spanish ship. And there were different factions in the game. We had uh, Spanish, English, French, uh, the United States... Uh, or the pirate faction, or even the cursed faction, and there were uh, factions that weren't true factions, such as mercenaries. So there, there were different uh, uh, groups that you could play as, uh, and this particular ship is uh, part of the Spanish faction, and this was one of the bigger ships in the game, uh, that is until the Ten Masters came out. And uh, ships either had, uh, before then, had one, two, three, or four, four or five masts, uh, basically denoting its power. And uh, the La Resolucion here is uh, a uh, four-masted ship here. And uh, this uh, particular ship came in three cards, and uh, you can see the guns uh, on the side of the ship, the main mast here, and then you had uh, these other uh, masts here uh, and some of the upper deck of this ship which is really cool and of course uh, each uh, ship had a carrying capacity in crew and gold and also a movement rating that, that were based off of the sides of the cards you can see it here representing red which is one long edge and uh, having white one short edge and uh, dependent on the ship uh, this particular ship had one long edge in movement and you had some speedy ships that were uh, three S's, or basically three short edges. Uh, you can move along the board of the game. There isn't really a true board, but uh, at least uh, you can, movement spaces you could uh, make. And uh, so that was kind of cool that they used the card as part of your measuring aspect of the game. And of course you had guns. Uh, and you had long range in red, short range in... Uh, white there of course corresponding to the long edge and short edge and of course accuracy uh, uh, based on the die roll and this rating here is uh, a two which meant uh, very accurate guns uh, because the the higher the number the less uh, I believe uh, the less accurate the shot was so if you had a lower number that was good on there so this one is a very uh, Average uh, movement, uh, very strong guns, and very strong in, in uh, strength. So, uh, pretty cool. And uh, this 13 denotes the cost to add to your fleet, I guess. 
And uh, I like I never really played the game that much. I played more online than I ever did uh, in person. And yeah, I really just collected uh, these uh, these cards for these ships. And uh, and you can see here the number from the set this ship came from. Uh, this was from the Ocean's Edge set. And uh, the color of the tab here denoted its uh, rarity. And this is an uncommon ship on there. And you, like I said, you had other things besides ships. Uh, you had like flotillas, uh, sea monsters, uh, coins. Uh, this one was punched out. You can see the coins down there. And uh, various other things. Uh, it was kind of cool. And uh, taking a look at a punched out uh, ship here, I have the uh, Constitution, which is based off a real ship. Uh, now, this is not 100% accurate, but it's uh, uh, pretty close uh, compared to, to other ships later on in the series. And you can see the Constitution here was a five-masted ship, uh, one of the more powerful ships in the game. Uh, you had uh, one, two, three, four, five masts here. And uh, you can see the, the faction flag on there, which is uh, kind of neat. Uh, hopefully you can uh, bring out the details here without blurring. I even had the name of the ship on the side. You can see a whole row of guns uh, for the Constitution. Uh, it's pretty cool. Pretty cool, neat uh, looking ship. And they even made the sails uh, unique. Uh, one side you got the front end and uh, the back side you can see behind the sails. You can see... Uh, all the rigging and stuff it's actually kind of cool and uh, on the deck itself you can see <laughs> some pictures detail of uh, barrels and uh, some guns and from the top uh, it's pretty cool I don't know if you can see it in the light there but uh, pretty neat that you can actually construct these out of three pieces of styro uh, styrene and uh, the square rigged uh, sailing ships were not the only types of ships you had schooners on here and this is a three-masted schooner uh, the Belladonna uh, I can't remember which set this is from uh, looks like it's from Rise of the Fiends set uh, number 37 and you can see uh, this is a schooner type as opposed to the square rigged sailing ship of the Constitution which is a uh, kind of cool and each ship type had a uh, unique uh, uh, rules to it uh, specific to the type of ship that you had and uh, we have here a galley uh, which had oars uh, this uh, sh type of ship originated with Pirates of the Barbary Coast yeah, but this particular ship was from uh, Fire and Steel but uh, this uh, particular sailing ship had oars so if all of the masts were blown off uh, this one uh, could still function instead of being derelict and this particular uh, galley was a British ship here. It belonged to the English faction here. Uh, so you had all these different kinds of ships. Uh, you even had junks, uh, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, originated from the South China Sea set. And uh, what we have here are some various sea monsters that uh, came out of the more fantastical elements of the Ages sail. Uh, you have here a Kraken type of uh, sea monster. I uh, can't remember what... This is from the Ocean's Edge set here. Uh, but uh, each of these tendrils act as a, sort of like the mast on a ship. Uh, provided the power or the hit points for the uh, particular uh, object and also the attacks. Uh, you could, I don't know if you could see it, but they, they actually imprinted the die rolls on each of the attacking uh, tendrils here. So that was kind of cool. You had uh, almost like a Loch Ness type of sea monster here, which was kind of cool. And you had uh, the serpent-like sea monster with wings. And you also had like giant crabs for sea monsters, a whole bunch of different types. And uh, it was really, really cool. And I just really enjoyed it. Uh, initially, I uh, really enjoyed it for the historical uh, aspects uh, of the ships that they provided, but I, I soon adjusted to the uh, sea monster types and the more fantastical elements. I, I just really loved the Age of Sail, and I, I loved how uh, they provided this in this type of game. And I just wanted to sh share with everyone uh, the Pirate CSG, since this game is no longer... 
uh, being produced at retail, at least to show those that were not uh, familiar with the Pirate CSG uh, what a really neat game this thing is. Uh, and But really not for the game, but really what you could do with Punch-Out styrene cards and uh, what you can create. <laughs> And where it, this uh, game is not just a simple card game. It's really a constructible strategy game where you could actually go for gold or battle it out or whatever you want to do. But really, I uh, just uh, wanted to share every, with everyone what a great game this was. And uh, it's still, uh, you could find cards on eBay uh, if you really wanted to get into the game. And they also have uh, some of the later sets still available in some stores, such as Fire and Steel here. Uh, because uh, when this game uh, uh, set its sails, <laughs> you could say, uh, there were quite a few game, uh, these packs still uh, uh, that were already produced and were being uh, resold through a, uh, a, a liquidator, you could say. And uh, these cards are still available on sale in packs, uh, value packs. Uh, at Target, I've seen them. Yeah, but uh, you can also you know, buy them online uh, through eBay if you'd like to construct these kinds of ships. I thought they were really cool, and I still continue to collect these. And uh, I have a really a massive collection uh, of ships, uh, well over 800 types of ships. Well, of course, not all of them punched out. A lot of them duplicates, but. Uh, I just love uh, collecting these ships. Uh, I think these are actually pretty neat and these sea monsters as well. And uh, But this is my casual peek into the Pirates Constructible Strategy Game. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.